It's light work. Period. Light work. Jasmine Walker. Joshua Primo. Herbert Jones. Roll Tide and welcome to Tide TV This Week. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by Kira Goldstein. And Kira, it's already here, our last show in August. Yeah, and you know what else is almost here? Football. We're about to kick off our fall season. We're certainly exciting for it. And the Crimson Tide football team continued practice during fall camp this week as the team prepares for the 2021 season. After four weeks of fall camp, the Tide will begin their season routine on Monday as Alabama prepares for their season opener against the Miami Hurricanes next Saturday, September 4th in Atlanta. This past Saturday, the Crimson Tide entered Bryant-Denny for the final time before the season begins as the Tide held their second and final scrimmage of fall camp. Let's take an all-access look at the Tide's final scrimmage of fall camp in Bryant-Denny Stadium this past Saturday. Time to go to work. After Saturday's scrimmage, the team had Sunday off before returning to the practice field on Monday. The team is practicing Monday through Saturday this week, but the Tide will begin their normal game week practice schedule on Monday. Let's hear Coach Saban's thoughts after the team's final scrimmage in Bryant-Denny this past Saturday. You know, there's a lot of good things out there today, uh, but there's also a lot of things that we need to improve on. So I don't think anybody's disappointed uh, in where we are, uh, but I don't think anybody's satisfied with where we are uh, either. So, um, you, you know, we had no, no significant injuries out there today. Uh, we had a couple guys out, uh, which I had mentioned before, Kendall Randolph, uh, DeMarco, um, you know, Shane Lee. Uh, so there were some guys that were out going in. There were some guys that um, we held out um, and had limited reps, uh, got a lot of reps for some other people. So. Uh, I'd say all in all, we made good progress, but we've got a long way to go. It's so exciting. It's just one week until the season kicks off for the Crimson Tide. I can't believe it's almost here, Roger. Well, I can't get here soon enough, Kira. The Crimson Tide begin the 2021 season the way they ended the 2020 season on top of the college football world at number one. The Tide received 63 of the 65 first place votes from the coaches. Alabama was followed by Clemson, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and Georgia in the coaches' top five. Right behind Georgia at number six is Texas A&M. The Florida Gators are just outside the top 10 at 11. LSU is 13th, with the Ole Miss Rebels rounding out the top 25. The Associated Press has Alabama number one in their top 25 as well. The Crimson Tide received 47 of the writers' 63 first place votes. The AP has their top five in a little different order. Oklahoma is second with Clemson behind the Sooners at three. Ohio State and Georgia are four and five respectively. And just like in the coaches poll, Texas A&M is ranked sixth. Florida is 13th with LSU coming in at 16. Along with the preseason top 25 polls being released, several preseason All-American teams have been announced as well. Yes, the Crimson Tide landed five on the preseason Associated Press All-American team. The Crimson Tide had an honoree on both the first-team offense and defense. Junior Evan Neal was chosen as a first-team member at offensive tackle. Sophomore Will Anderson Jr. was chosen at linebacker for the first-team defense. The Crimson Tide also had three selected to the second team. Junior guard Emil Echior Jr., junior wideout John Mechie, and junior linebacker Christian Harris. Neil and Anderson were also named first team, first team preseason All-Americans by ESPN, USA Today, and The Sporting News. Mechie was tabbed as a first team All-American by USA Today. Senior Josh Job was selected to the second team by USA Today and The Sporting News. And The Sporting News also selected junior place kicker Will Reichard to their second team. Well, the coaches of the Southeastern Conference also released their preseason All-SEC team this week, and the Crimson Tide had a league-best 15 players selected, including an SEC-leading seven on the first team. 
Seven first team selections for the Crimson Tide feature two offensive players in John Mechie and Evan Neal, and five on the defensive side of the ball with defensive lineman Fedarian Mathis, linebackers Will Anderson Jr. and Christian Harris, and defensive backs Malachi Moore and Josh Job. Tight end Jaleel Billingsley and offensive lineman Emil Ekir Jr. are on the second team offense as well, while linebacker Henry Tooto and defensive back Jordan Battle were selected to the second team defense. Rounding out the list on the all-SEC third team are running back Brian Robinson Jr., defensive lineman LeBrian Ray, linebacker Christopher Allen, and place kicker Will Reichard. Certainly impressive, the Crimson Tide with seven on the first team, all-SEC coaches team, and 15 all-SEC players total. Very impressive. While Coach Saban and the team have been hard at work on the field during fall camp, they've also been having a little fun off the field as well. They certainly have been. When we come back, we'll head out to the lake with Coach Saban and some of the players as Coach Saban and Miss Terry had the freshmen over to their house for a little fun on Lake Tuscaloosa. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, for great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. The team has been out hard on the practice fields, working hard as Alabama prepares for next weekend's season opener against the Miami Hurricanes. But it hasn't been all work. The team has taken a little time out for some fun recently as Coach Saban and Miss Terry had the freshmen out to their house for the annual Freshman Lake Day. Let's go all access for some fun and sun out on the lake with Coach Saban and the Tide. I ain't falling on what? How? He barely got me. You don't think Coach Saban was trying to throw them off the raft on purpose, <laughs> do you, Roger? Uh, maybe. He might have been testing them. It did look like they were having a lot of fun. You know, Coach Saban does have a great sense of humor. I know he enjoys doing that each year with the incoming freshmen. Yes, he does. You know, Roger, something else Coach Saban enjoys doing for the players is bringing in powerful speakers. Yeah, during fall camp, Coach Saban had several big-name speakers come and visit with the team, including Alex Rodriguez, Alex Smith, and Ernie Johnson, Jr. We showed a preview of the Bama Cuts episode with Alex Rodriguez last week, and this week we're going to share a preview of the latest Bama Cuts episode with Ernie Johnson Jr. You can view all the Bama Cuts episodes on our YouTube channel, UA Athletics. On the homepage, you'll see a playlist with all the Bama Cuts episodes from the past three seasons. Let's take a look at a funny moment from the episode with Ernie. It's actually about Shaq's feet. <laughs> Seeing Shaq, you know, his feet being big. <laughs> that gnarly, man. Like, I want to know, like, how, how really, what you think about that, with a big, that big old feet? It's like a size 20, what, three? I don't care about the size, man. It's when he takes off the sock. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's got a big toe. He's got a big toe about this big. <laughs> and no. the nail, you know, the skin's over the nail, and there's bumps and lumps and stuff. And it's, it's more like that, and it's just like, and it's like, do something with those, do something with, with those feet. Uh, what, are you, what are you hiding your? That boy better try to slide his toes in. That boy try to slide his toes in. Oh man! No. <laughs> Tide TV This Week is presented by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. 
Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. I'm Kira Goldstein, joined by my co-host, Roger Hoover. Roger, we have seen how the Alabama football team is putting in a lot of work on the practice field, but they have been putting in a lot of work off the field as well. Yes, they have, Kira. Starting with the championship in 2011, Coach Saban and his Knicks Kids Foundation, along with Habitat for Humanity, has built a home for a needy family for every championship that Alabama has won in football. This past season's national championship was the 18th for the Crimson Tide, and this year, the 18th home was built. Coach Saban, along with members of the football team and the Tuscaloosa community, came together to build a home for the Hamner family. This is something that we started when uh, we had the tornado in uh, 2011. A lot of people lost their homes and uh, it was a good opportunity for us to give back to the community. One of the ways we gave back to the community to help people at that time and we just continued on. Recently, Coach Saban's wife, Miss Terry, along with wives of the assistant coaches, decorated the outside of the home. They planted trees, plants, flowers, and other shrubbery. They did a fantastic job, Roger. It really looks beautiful. Certainly does, and this is just a small example of what Coach Saban and Miss Terry have done for Tuscaloosa and the West Alabama community. In all, through their Nick's Kids Foundation, almost $9 million has been donated to deserving organizations and causes since arriving in Tuscaloosa. Recently, it was announced that the Saban Center will be housed in what is currently the Tuscaloosa News Building next to the amphitheater. The project will combine the Children's Hands-On Museum, the Tuscaloosa Public Library, and the Tuscaloosa Children's Theater into a single location. Nick's Kids is making a $250,000 contribution along with the personal pledge from Coach Saban and Miss Terry of $1 million to this initiative that will combine STEM programs and the arts to, to provide a unique and interactive learning experience for the children of Tuscaloosa. For their generosity, the city of Tuscaloosa voted to rename the street leading to the Saban Center, Nick's Kids Avenue. Let's take a look at the celebration and the dedication of Nick's Kids Avenue. right here in Tuscaloosa in large part to the Saban family. The city council is going to recognize the Saban family for their boundless generosity by officially dedicating 28th Avenue as Nick's Kids Avenue. And now we'll be able to come down Nick's Kids Avenue to an elite learning center, hands-on museum, children's theater, that we can all be proud of and participate in. This is a great feeling that we have a community here that's all together and trying to help us, help young, young people have a better chance to be successful in their life. You know, the Children's Learning Center that will someday be here is something that we are uh, very much in support of uh, in many, many ways, but Obviously, that is something that can uh, help a lot of young people uh, be inspired to get an education, to have the kind of principles and values that are going to help them be more successful in life, which is really kind of the philosophy of our program for the players in our program. So uh, this just extends that to other young people in the community so that they have an opportunity uh, to be as successful as well. slowing down. It's all about the process. It's more than a buzz at Bryant Denny. This guy's not going anywhere. He doesn't just roll out great players. He and his staff develop them. Bama's dominance shouldn't scare you. It should energize you. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. We have been talking a lot about the Crimson Tide football team. I know. It's in preparation for their season opener, but many other teams are gearing up for fall competition as well, including the Alabama women's tennis team. Yeah, the excitement surrounding a season opener is a very familiar feeling for head coach Dane Mines as she enters her 25th season with the Crimson Tide. Our Kennedy Chase joins us now for a chance to dive deeper into this incredible achievement. Kennedy? Thanks, Roger and Kira. 
When talking to Coach Mines about her years here at the Capstone, you feel nothing but inspired. She says being a coach for the Crimson Tide is truly a privilege. I got into coaching, um, I think in large from my high school tennis coach, John Peterson. He was a tremendous influence on me in high school and um, I went on and played college tennis but stayed in touch with them and it was just a great experience. And I think I really wanted to, to make a positive impact in young people's lives the same way that a lot of coaches made in my life growing up. So when I started in 1997, we basically lost a lot of players just due to illness, injury, transfer. Um, and so I went to sorority houses and PE classes and recruited players that had played high school tennis for a year or two. And so, and that was the first two years of the program when I you know, took over. Needless to say, going from dead last in the SEC and, and not, lose, not winning any matches in my first year to winning the SEC championship in 2014 and a handful of um, a couple national championships and doubles, you know, it was very rewarding to see the, the growth and the development of the program. But my first sign was Rebecca Baum from the state of Alabama. And I take so much pride in that because that was a, a big, it was, it was a big deal. I remember Tommy Wade, who used to coach here, called me and said, you need to watch Rebecca Baum play. And she was playing in Memphis, Tennessee at the Clay Court Championships. And I had a big list of players that I was going to watch and Rebecca Baum was on that list. I went and watched her play. And she, a lot of people were, were recruiting her at the time. And we, we somehow got her to Alabama. When did we start seeing the success of the program. I, I think we saw it in year one when I arrived because it, it was difficult, it was challenging. We had a lot of adversity, but we had walk-ons. We had four or five walk-ons that played in our program in the 1997-98 season. And in my opinion, I think they saved our program. But I, I think in that beginning of the fourth year, we really made a significant jump. My most proud moment or, or event of being 25 years in at the Capstone is seeing these young ladies grow up and mature and advance and make big decisions and, and go on and now they're married and they have families and they have, they're in corporate jobs. And one of my first players, Melissa Minor, lives in Birmingham. She's married and has four kids and she's a school teacher. It's watching them grow and develop and just, Everything they go through in college to, you know, the adversity and the challenges and the ups and downs, but to watch them battle through it and battle through it together and then to see, you know, see what, what happens with them afterward. It's really fun. It's really rewarding. I stay in touch with a lot of players and it, it, it's fun. That's the wins and the losses are awesome, but the, the watching them mature and, and, and grow as a team and play together as a team and do things that they never knew they could do. That is, that is probably the best part of coaching. Wow, Coach Mines has definitely made an impact in her 25 years here for the Crimson Tide. But don't go anywhere. We have more Tide TV this week coming up. In a season of chaos. You can tell they authentically play for each other. Alabama does it. How good can the Crimson Tide be again in 21? It just doesn't show any sign of slowing down. It's all about the process. It's more than a buzz at Bryant Denny. This guy's not going anywhere. He doesn't just roll out great players. He and his staff develop them. Bama's dominance shouldn't scare you. It should energize you. Defense trying to take away. Like deflection from Tanner, a shot on goal, but Lurch has the save for a moment, only to find it go to the back of the net as the Crimson Tide go in front. Corner kick for Alabama. It's in! 2 nothing Crimson Tide. Attacking third, another opportunity here. And it's in! 3 nothing Alabama. Still a chance for the tie. To the center. Oh. Turned around oh. and Cundy makes it 4 nothing Alabama. Those were our ATI Plays of the Week. A very impressive home opener for the Crimson Tide as they shut out Jacksonville State with a dominant 4 to nothing win. Now let's take a look at our Player of the Week. This honor is brought to you by Legacy of Hope. 
This week, our Legacy of Hope Player of the Week is former Crimson Tide quarterback Mac Jones. He was named the Cosida Academic All-American of the Year, becoming the fourth Alabama athlete to earn the prestigious award. Mac Jones graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2019 and a master's degree in December of 2020, and both times he did it with a perfect 4.0 GPA. This accomplishment is just one of many accolades he received for his time at Alabama, as he was named SEC Athlete of the Year in 2020, won the Davey O'Brien, Johnny Unitas, Golden Arm, and Manning Awards, and, oh yeah, won a national championship. Mac was also drafted in the first round of the NFL Draft by the New England Patriots. Not a bad career at all, and he's just 22. Way to go, Joker. <laughs> And he's doing pretty well in the NFL already, Roger. This week against the New York Giants starting defense, he was 29 of 32, including 18 consecutive completions. Very impressive way to go, Mac. Hope he's named the starting quarterback soon. Congratulations to Mac Jones. He's our player of the week, brought to you by Legacy of Hope. We made it, Roger. Week two of Tide TV this week for this season is in the books. And next week, we get to preview the season opener for the Crimson Tide against the Miami Hurricanes. And tune in next week as we bring you more on the Crimson Tide and all access content you can't get anywhere else. See you next week. Roll Tide, everybody. Roll Tide.